Welcome back. Yes, 2023 is coming to an end, but it's not over yet. We already know 2023 has been one for the record books. Remember the crazy hot summer we just had? Well, me and Montgomery and Stephanie Jimenez recap all the records we broke and they give us a look at how we can prepare for severe weather next year. Here's a clip from their special, which you can watch right now on KSAT.com. We have milder weather now, but let's rewind a bit to the summer of 2023. How would you describe it? It was really horrible. Some even say? Unbearable. The temperatures in South Central Texas broke record after record. We've had eight days in which we hit 105 or higher. It marked our 60th triple digit day that we have seen so far this year. The hottest month ever recorded in San Antonio with an average temp of 90.6. Everyone and everything was affected from homeowners to businesses and people who work outside in the elements. Even thinking back to 2021, we had the winter storm, except then it was snow and ice that staggered Texans. 10 degrees here in San Antonio. Both cases of extreme weather taught us preparation is key. CPS Energy says it's under orders to begin rotating outages. Local groups and agencies are having those conversations. How do we work with those stakeholders that, that already work with uh, persons that are you know, 65 and older, or they have a medical condition, people with disabilities, or individuals who are homebound? While we can't predict severe weather months before it happens, we can do our best to prepare when we're not in a weather emergency. So let's get ready. So me and Stephanie go over all the ways that you can help prepare your homes and stay healthy no matter how hot or how cold it gets. You can watch the special. Just take out the phone, go to the camera app, scan the QR code. It'll take you right to our website. You can also watch it on KSAT's YouTube and, of course, KSAT Plus. All right, Justin Horn, you made an appearance in the special. It's beautiful out there right now, but to their point, a lot of records throughout the year. It feels like we've had some extremes over the last couple of years. There's no doubt about it. And this summer was brutal, and we're still dealing with a lack of rainfall. Of course, severe weather season's only a few minutes away. A few minutes, a few months away. <laughs> not a few minutes, a few months. Uh, we'll be dealing with uh, thunderstorms back in the forecast, but not now. We're in a stretch of good weather. And I want to show you a picture on our KSAC Connect. This is... Beautiful. That is uh, the ring around the moon. We had a lot of pictures sent in the KSAC Connect showing this. What happens here is you get these cirrus clouds that are made of ice way up in the atmosphere. When the light of the moon comes through those uh, clouds of ice, the light gets reflect refracted and you get these perfect circles right around the moon. Looks pretty cool. And by the way, we have a full moon today. Uh, so if you want to check it out, I don't know if we'll have cirrus clouds again tonight. Uh, but this was a great shot. And this was out near Fisher, by the way. Thank you for sending that in. Quick check of Trans Guide. Everything looks good here. Traffic is moving along. Yeah, there are some clouds here and there across the city. We've seen some off and on cloud cover in spots, but there's enough sun up there to get our temperatures uh, nice and comfortable later this afternoon. 59 to 2 o'clock, 61 is our forecast high. Mostly sunny skies, a light southerly wind 5 to 10. And then tonight, know that temperatures will fall off. Quickly, you'll want your coat if you're going to be out about 54 at 7 o'clock, 51, 8 p.m. We're already down in the 40s by 9 and 10 o'clock on our way to 30s by tomorrow morning. Now, look at that seven-day forecast for you coming up in just a couple minutes. Max. Thank you, Justin. Starting overseas as the terrorist organization Hamas still holds hostages, including dozens of Americans. Protests around the world continue, even after reports from Reuters that Hamas and Islamic Jihad rejected a permanent ceasefire because... They did not want to give up power, but as the holiday weekend has come and gone, the fighting continues. Israel continues to expand its military offensive into the territory. The opening of this new potential battle zone threatens to bring new destruction in an area, a war that Israel says will last more months as they vow to crush Hamas. Ron Dermer, a close advisor to Israel's prime minister and a member of the country's war cabinet, he is scheduled to meet with the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, and... National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan in Washington tomorrow afternoon. And a few senior U.S. officials are meeting with Mexico's president tomorrow as well to discuss the surge of migrants at the U.S.-Mexico border. The Mexican president says the meeting will include U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken as well and the Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas. Now, U.S. authorities say the situation at the border has reached a breaking point as more than 10,000 migrants have been crossing into the United States every day. Also on the meeting's agenda, the treatment of the migrants, something Mexican officials say they are concerned about. 
And the holiday season drove up U.S. retail sales for the end of the year at a moderate rate. MasterCard Spending Pulse reported that retail sales jumped 3.1% from November 1st to Christmas Eve compared to the same time frame last year. Spending increased in several areas, with restaurants seeing the biggest jump with, get this, an almost 8% increase in sales. And 100 firefighters responding to this house fire early this morning in Melville, New York. That's a town on Long Island. It was sparked by a propane tank between a shed and the house. Most of that home was on fire by the time crews even arrived. It was successfully put out. Fire officials still searching for the sole occupant, the person who lived there. And the Powerball was not in the spirit of giving for Christmas. No winner in last night's drawing for the jackpot. But if you want to get yourself or someone a late Christmas gift, the next drawing is tomorrow night. And because no one won the jackpot, well, it has, won it has grown to $685 million. A lot of people impacted by the mental and physical stress of the pandemic. It is even possible for some people to still feel anxiety related to that period in their lives. But according to a new study, years after the start of COVID-19, many people are surprisingly okay. With more, here's ABC's Liz Landers. The start of the COVID-19 pandemic was chaotic and stressful, but most people have settled back to a similar mental state as before the outbreak hit, according to a recent study. Researchers looked at studies of general mental health, depression and anxiety in people around the world. Some groups seemed more affected by the pandemic than others. Older adults, university students and people of a sexual or gender minority group had slightly worse symptoms of depression. Women also have overall worse mental health, depression and anxiety now than they did before the pandemic started. However, all these changes in mental health outcomes were minimal. Many people have experienced aspects of COVID-19 as unpleasant, uncomfortable and distressing. And at the beginning of the pandemic, rates of depression increased. But a few months later, those numbers dropped back down to almost pre-pandemic rates. Either way, we should all continue to take care of our mental health and pay extra attention to those groups who have been more affected as a result of COVID-19. With this Medical Minute, I'm Liz Landers. Well, Christmas has come and gone, meaning if you didn't like your gift, return season has kicked into high gear. Experts say make sure you read the return policies because some of them, including Amazon, they're cutting down on the return windows. About 40% of retailers across the country, they also now charge a return fee. So if you do plan to go to the store today, if you already have, you already know the consequences, but make sure you check the policy before you go. And while those companies are minimizing their return windows, Apple trying to expand the way they teach its artificial intelligence programs. The New York Times reporting that Apple has been in contact with numerous news and public publishing organizations hoping to license their archives to better train Apple's AI. And making a mixed drink at the next holiday party could be as easy as just opening a bottle. Several major liquor companies, well, they're starting to push large bottles of cocktails, pre-made cocktails, things like old fashions, even espresso martinis and margaritas. They're all found in an all-in-one bottle. This new push caters to large gatherings as opposed to the common individual canned cocktail that's usually made for just one person. And finally, Oreo unveiling new plans to tempt people's taste buds with three new cookies for the new year. So the first one on your screen, black and white cookies, vanilla and chocolate cream. That's going to be offered for a limited time. Cookies with, here you go, the Cakesters, peanut butter cream. They're soft cookies. That's going to be added to the permanent lineup. And a new gluten-free Oreo, also a permanent fixture. Well, delayed honor for an acclaimed actress. Spotlight in Hollywood. We have the details next on the News at Noon. Welcome back in the spotlight today. A delayed honor for an acclaimed actress and the first look at the second half of a hit sci-fi adventure. Here's CNN's David Daniel. Imagine knowing you could do something that no one else could do. Nyad star Annette Benning was supposed to receive the Golden Medallion Award at this year's Telluride Film Festival, where the movie premiered. But the festival took place during the actors' strike, so it's holding a special tribute event January 6th in Los Angeles. Actress and director Meg Ryan will present the award, and Benning's Nyad co-star Jodie Foster will moderate a discussion with Benning about her career. 
time has come for all that you love. Show them no mercy. You stand between us and annihilation. Here's your first look at Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. Part 1, A Child of Fire, debuted last week on Netflix and hit number one on the streamer's top movies chart. The second half of filmmaker Zack Snyder's sci-fi epic arrives April 19th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. All right, something in this world. We're going to take a live look out of the Alamo City, 55 degrees. All right, we still got some clouds popping up, but earlier it was a beautiful blue sky just north. Are we going to see rain anytime soon? No. No, there's not in the forecast. Plain simple, simple no. Uh, yeah, we do have those clouds out there, but they're not producing any rain, and we don't expect any really uh, to the foreseeable future. Not the way we want to end 2023, but that's the way it is going to end. 53 so far today. 37 was low this morning. The averages are 63 and 41. Uh, we'll be right about average for the high temperature, obviously a little bit below average for the low temperature. And the records are 83 and 15, so it shows you how warm it could be and how cold it could be this time of year. We're somewhere in the middle, uh, right where we want to be. More great weather on the way. We're going to look at that, plus the travel forecast and a look at Mountain Cedar, too, coming up. Welcome back. Swifties everywhere buzzing about the latest Taylor Swift sighting and her 1989 album still topping the charts. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson with that story. Plus, look at a new movie racing into theaters. It was a Merry Christmas for Taylor Swift. She spent part of it with Santa, watching her boyfriend, Kansas City Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey, play the Las Vegas Raiders. And her re recording of her 1989 album is back at number one on the Billboard 200 album chart, its fourth non consecutive week atop the list. That ties Swift with Elvis as the solo artist with the most weeks at number one on the album chart, 67. The most weeks overall, though, still the Beatles with 132, a number that'll be tough for Swift to equal. So, what do I do? Win the Mille Milla, Enzo. One of the new movies in theaters Christmas Day, Adam Driver's Ferrari. The star plays Enzo Ferrari, founder of the iconic car company. And when it comes to cars, Driver tells me before having kids, he used to like to drive fast. And while he admires small, sleek sports cars, they're not really for him. In most of them, I can't fit in them. So it kind of limits me to <laughs> newer cars. You know, uh, it's a, a, a problem with being 6'3". Ferrari also stars Penelope Cruz. It's in theaters now. It's time for the last laughs from Letterkenny. The cult Canadian comedy drops its final episodes today on Hulu. And Oscar-winning actor and 30 Seconds to Mars frontman Jared Leto with a birthday today. He's 52. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Ingrams in ABC News, Los Angeles. All right, to our own 30 Seconds to Mars Super fan Justin Horn. Justin has the weather out there. <laughs> I can't say I've ever seen that video before. Um, looking good. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Mountain Cedar uh, because uh, it's, it's been elevated the last few days. We've seen some pretty big numbers. Today it's at 3,940, which is high. And what this graph shows, that red line shows the average. So when we would expect Mountain Cedar to peak, and that typically is in January, uh, going into February. Uh, we always say that Valentine's Day is kind of the unofficial end to mountain cedar season. So we got a ways to go, but we started early. So it kind of makes you think maybe we'll peak a little bit earlier this year. We'll see. Uh, but the numbers have been high. These uh, bars here show uh, where we are. And we've had some days that are high, but not very high. There's the very high category. We haven't gotten there yet. Uh, hopefully we don't, uh, but we'll keep you posted. I think that the pattern this week sets us up for more high counts. Now, yeah, we did fall a little bit today, but we'll have sort of a northerly wind the next few days, and that should keep numbers at least a little bit elevated. We'll keep you posted. We can't say that for sure, but that's generally the idea with uh, the, the mountain cedar. Uh, and the wind gusts, uh, not too strong today. We'll see them pick up some next few days, 5 to 15, nothing that's overly gusty, but with it uh, being out of the north, typically brings in some of that uh, cedar pollen. All right, dew points across the state are low. We've got extremely dry air out near El Paso. Dew point of negative two, that's about as dry as it gets, but we've got dew points in the mid-30s, which puts us in the very dry category. And I don't anticipate this changing. In fact, we'll get even drier air next couple of days surging in here. So without any sort of moisture in the atmosphere, 
That takes away our chances for rain, unfortunately. Right now, we've got a few clouds trying to move through San Antonio. 52, 54 in New Braunfels, 55 skiing, 52 in Kerrville. And the forecast for today, we'll call it mostly sunny, although there will be some times where we'll uh, be dealing with partly cloudy skies. 61 at 3 o'clock. That's our high. Then down into the 50s this evening, 54 at 7 o'clock. With the full moon tonight, it should be out. It should be bright. 47 at 10 o'clock, 45 at 11 p.m. Here's a look at the satellite picture, and there are some of those clouds I was talking about. Uh, you can pick them up here. Northwestern Bear County starting to kind of move in the direction of San Antonio, so things may cloud up a little bit here next hour. They shouldn't last too, too long, uh, but we continue to see some of those clouds around Bandera and Lakey and Uvalde with the sun kind of peeking through at times. Bigger picture here, and this is all, by the way, these clouds are all part of a much larger storm system that it's, uh, it's kind of like a comma shape here, right? So it stretches all the way out across the East Coast and down into the Gulf of Mexico. But you got good snow on the back side of this. It has lasted for several days there in the plains. This is finally going to move and move east and away from uh, the plains and away from us. It'll take some of the heavy rain now up into the northeast, which could cause some travel delays, but it pushes drier air back into our neighborhood. neighborhood. And it's going to keep us dry for the next couple of days, as I said, until we get into... Uh, Saturday into Sunday where there could be a little bit more moisture creeping in, but still I don't think it brings us any rain. That's out ahead of a front that moves through Sunday night, which won't have a big impact on your New Year's Eve celebrations. It'll be in the 40s, maybe a little bit breezy. We ring in the new year, but all in all it looks pretty good. 62 on Monday for New Year's Day, and you see the rest of the forecast there. Mainly 60s, cold mornings, so jackets in the morning, and you can probably lose them during the afternoons. Max. Thank you, Justin. Christmas is over. That doesn't mean that you've lost the chance to look at some beautiful holiday lights in and around San Antonio. We have a full list of places in the Alamo City that are planning to keep their lights on display for at least a few more days. Just head to KSAT.com. Some of these places will even stay lit up after New Year's. And a look at the biggest headlines in the tech world right after the break. Dreaming now. It is one of those dream interviews, a bucket list Spreester session, by the way. It's a chance to sit down with Texas legend Robert Earl Keane and get a tour of his ranch. I'm a songwriter and I make people happy when I play. Being a legend, I don't know. I, don't, I sort of enjoy people not being able to recognize me. And for some reason, my voice gives me away all the time. Streaming now on these platforms. In today's Tech Bites, fewer people are posting on social media these days. Advertising and misinformation are being blamed for causing people to take a more passive approach to social media. A new report finds Instagram is the most likely social media app to be deleted based on the number of searches online for how to delete my account. China is having a change of heart after a proposal to restrict online gaming sparked a financial meltdown. The proposal would limit how much gamers in China are allowed to spend. The proposal triggered an $80 billion sell-off in gaming stocks. Those new rules are now under review. And a federal judge has cleared the way for employees of X to sue over unpaid bonuses. The company, formerly known as Twitter, is accused of failing to honor repeated promises to pay the 2022 bonuses after it was acquired by Elon Musk. I hear Santa's workshop doesn't give out bonuses at all. The workers are all elf-employed. Those are your tech bites.